Good morning, Year 3, and welcome to week 12 of your math learning. This week, we are going to be learning about picture graphs and using them to solve problems, reading them, and making your own picture graphs. So, today we are going to learn how to read picture graphs. So, here is a picture graph. It tells a story, Mr. Stredwick tidies up the balls in the PE cupboard. There are four types of ball and he's drawn a picture graph to show the number of each type of ball. So have a look, pause the video and have a look at the graph and see what information, what data you can draw from the picture graph. So if we have a look in this column here, we can see that this column represents footballs, rugby balls, rubber balls, and beach balls. And at the bottom we have the key which tells us that each blue circle stands for one ball. So we can look at this column here and we will know by counting up the number of blue dots that there are 12 footballs. This column here represents rugby balls and there are eight rugby balls, 10 rubber balls and four beach balls. From that, we can use this data to obviously how many types of ball there are, but we can also answer questions such as the total number of balls, how many more rubber balls there are than beach balls and so forth. So this is just another way of presenting numbers and data. Now, he could also have presented it slightly differently. Have a look at this picture graph and see if you can work out what the difference is. Still the same information, Still the same number of balls in that cupboard. However, this time, he has used a blue circle to represent two balls. So if we count up the footballs, counting two for each blue circle, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, we still have the same number of footballs, which is 12, but the data is just presented slightly differently and that is because the blue circle stands for two balls. So when we are counting the number of each balls, we need to remember to count in twos. So have a look at some of these questions here. Pause the video and see if you can answer them, remembering what the blue circle stands for. So how many more footballs than rugby balls are there? What I would do if I was approaching this, these problems is I would probably count up the number of each of these balls anyway and just in the corner possibly write down the number so that you've got them to hand. So we've got 12 footballs and we've got two, four, six, eight rugby balls so we know that there are four more footballs. 12 take away eight is four. How many rugby balls and beach balls are there all together? You could do this two ways. You could count up the number of blue circles that you have for beach balls and rugby balls. So we've got six blue circles. We know that each of those represents two balls. Six multiplied by two is 12. So we know there are 12 all together. Or we could have done it the same way as last time. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. The next question, there are 10 of which kind of ball? We know again, two balls represented by one of the blue circles. So if we divided 10 by two, that would tell me I'm looking for a ball which has five blue circles. I can see the rubber ball has five blue circles. So I know there are 10 rubber balls. If you didn't want to do it that way, you could then have just counted each one individually until you found the one that had 10. And then we've got a bit of a word problem. Mr. Stredwick buys more beach balls. Now the number of beach balls and the rubber balls are the same. How many more beach balls did Mr. S buy? So we see we've already got four beach balls. We've got two blue dots and the rubber balls. We've got 10 rubber balls, five blue dots. So I know to make them the same in this part of the graph, I'm going to have another three blue circles which each one standing for two balls means that I need another six beach balls to make the amount the same. Or I could have just counted up two, four, six, eight, ten, four on this side, take it away, and I would know that again that I'd need six. So there are a couple of ways that you can use the data that's presented in the graph to help you work out the problems. 
It can also be presented slightly differently. So on this one, we had the data going up in columns. This one is going across in rows, but it's exactly the same type of graph, still a picture graph. The children in Mondrian class have lost some of their baby teeth. They draw a picture graph to show the number of children who have lost some of their teeth. So again, pause the video, just have a look at the graph and think about what kind of information it's telling you. So, the key at the bottom, each star stands for three children. So we can see children we have lost one tooth. We have one star that stands for three children. So on, two teeth, number of children we've lost two teeth. There are three stars and we know three of those equals three times three. So we know nine children have lost two. Have a go at answering these questions and we'll go through them together. Okay, hopefully you paused and had a go at answering these questions. So I'd already given you some information I'd worked out for you that one star um, means that three children have only lost one tooth. Again, two stars means that six children have lost three teeth. So I asked how many children have lost two teeth. So you'd go to the picture graph up here, follow it along, you would see that there are three stars. Each star represents three children, so we know that the number of children who've lost two teeth is nine. And again, how many children have lost four teeth? Four teeth, again, it's three stars, so you would again know that that's nine children. How many children are there all together in Mondrian class? So there are a couple of ways you could work this out. You could work out how many children are represented in each of the rows, or you could count the number of stars that we've got in the picture graph in total. And we can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Each of those represents three children. And if we know our three times table or our nine times table, three times nine, nine times three is 27. The number of children who have lost blank teeth is the same as those who have lost blank. So we're looking for the number of children to be the same. And we see that they're the same in these two rows here. So the number of children who have lost two teeth is the same as the number of children who have lost four teeth. And here we have another snack, now, uh, another <laughs> picture graph rather. Now you will have noticed that in each of these graphs we use different symbols to represent the fruit, the teeth, anything in the picture graph, the different kinds of footballs. It doesn't really matter what kind of shape as long as you use the same shape in each section of the graph so that the person reading the data from it knows that one of these represents a particular number. Now have a look at this graph because you will see there's something slightly different about it. So the children of Fair Oak Junior School eat fruit for their snack. They draw a picture graph to show the number of each type of fruit eaten on Friday. Looking at this graph, you will notice that we don't have the bit along the bottom that tells us what one of these represents. However, if you look at the questions, you should be able to work it out. So it tells us the children ate 25 apples. This is our column for apples. So we know that these five red triangles add up to 25. So if we divide 25 by five to work out what one stands for, we know that 25 divided by five is five. So each red triangle stands for five five apples in this case, but it then allows us to work out how many pieces of fruit the rest of the, the triangles represent. Now again, we've got a blank column here, but we've given the information they ate 35 pairs. So we need to then add the correct number of red triangles to the graph. How do we do that? Well, we know that one of these represents five pieces of fruit. So if we divide 35 by five, we get seven. So we know we would need to draw seven red triangles on the graph. Then we asked the least popular fruit was, well, we could do that simply by looking at the number of triangles. And we can see that grapes only one has only one red triangle, which means only five children um, ate grapes. So that's the least popular. 
And how many fewer oranges than bananas did they eat? Again, two ways you could do that. You could look at the number of red triangles and we can see that there are two more in the banana, even though I've written orange here, um, the banana column. So we know that these two represent five each, which is 10, or you could have added each column up, five, 10, 15, 20, take away five, 10, leaves 10. So they ate 10 fewer oranges and bananas. And altogether, the children of Feroch Jr. ate how many pieces of fruit? So we had seven triangles here, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we would need to multiply that by five. Now, some of you may know five times 19 and are able to do that mentally, or you might choose to do um, a strategy such as doing five times 20, which is 100, and taking away five, which leaves you with 95. However, you manage to do that mentally, well done. So today's tasks is a reading picture task, uh, picture graphs task. I've given you some different picture graphs and I've asked different questions about them. So on this one, you've got all of the information on the graph and you just need to pull some of the data out answering these questions. This one, I haven't told you what each book represents and there's also a blank column and some different word problems for you to work through. And finally, one that's presented slightly differently, um, and again, you don't have a key and there's a blank column. So work through those um, and just be careful to remember that these do not always equal one or the same number as the previous time, bearing in mind what the symbol and the key represents each time. And we'll give you the answers tomorrow.